Hey everybody, we'll kick off this podcast with a conversation with my good friend, Alessandro Gentili. He has over 10 years experience building and growing international businesses with outstanding results in online sales. In this episode, we'll talk about his journey of working in e-commerce from his early beginning in his homeland in Italy and then passing through various countries in Europe until landing a prominent job in Germany. We also delved into discussion that in each country we can find brands that create such amazing products that unfortunately don't make it to the masses often enough due to lack of knowledge or mismanagement from the manufacturers. So we talked about the use of marketplaces like Amazon, we dig a little deeper in the direct-to-consumer trend, and we also talk about how brands can use e-commerce to their advantage. I really hope you enjoy it. Remember to like and share. My name is Rafael Berti, and this is The Intrepid Sellers. Today we have Alessandro here to, with us, and uh, hi Alessandro, how are you doing, man? Very, very good, thank you. Yeah, Alessandro, maybe you want to do a short introduction about yourself and what you do? Absolutely. Uh, I'm uh, originally Italian, I'm based in Berlin, and for the last uh, 12 years, I would say, I've been working across EMEA markets, focusing on e-commerce. That's a little bit my background. Oh, okay, fantastic. So, uh, um, how long did you say you, you since you left Italy? Uh, I came back to Germany two years ago. I mean, it's quite complicated because I am originally from a small village nearby the Como Lake, mm -hmm. and I moved to Milan. I studied in Milan. I started to work there. Then I started to go in France, and therefore I speak French. And uh, after some years there, I basically found myself in Germany, in Hamburg, which is in the northern city, in the northern part of Germany. And I lived there for five years. Then I went back two years to Italy. And now it's two years that I'm back in Germany, based in Berlin. Actually, I'm moving this week. Officially. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I caught you at a good, a good time then. <laughs> but I mean, just all these to say that uh, for many years, I've been exposed to international business. I do speak other languages and therefore uh, it's for me interesting because you have the possibility also to get a little bit of more insight speaking the language and living in the countries because of course Europe is beautiful. It's different and all the markets also for e-commerce are very, very specific. Mm. That's a point. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to come back to that. You know, I'm, I'm sort of interested to know more of, of, of your international experience. And in my experience, I see that some Italians, um, quite a lot of Italians, they, they, they have this thing of going to other countries as well. I actually had the opportunity to live in Italy back in 2006. And, uh, but then going to e-commerce, and, and this is what I wanted to ask you, because when I was living there, um, you, you know, Italy is perceived as this country with a lot of traditions, especially when it comes to food. So um, you have very, um, a lot of specialties or specialties that are made in a country, sometimes like small companies or small producers in, um, and, and, you know, they're not, they're not like mass produced, but they're really focused on the quality of the products. Mm -hmm. And, um, but back then, in general, e-commerce was unheard of. Like um, we're talking 2006, like, you know, no, the, the, the country is very much traditional. Like everyone go to the local store. That's no like accessing the internet for purchasing. And I'm just curious to know if, if that's, that has changed, you know, including in a, you say you come from a small little town and is, has it changed there or is it still the same? How, how is e-commerce in, in, in Italy right now? Uh, I think absolutely the situation had changed. Uh, I mean, coming from, for example, the small village, I still remember the first time in which uh, my father, uh, we're talking about, I think 15 years ago might be, I, I'm not sure about the date, I would need to double check. But anyway, many years ago, we received the first time in the morning, two different parcels from an online marketplaces. And these were books. 
So all these to say that, of course, the market was definitely um, very special in the sense of uh, what you said, Rafael, is correct, that the market was for many years perceived as a good market growing in terms of rates and so on. And if you look, uh, there was absolutely a need. And that's why you got lots of international companies that were already doing business. Of course, we can say same name, Amazon, it's a good example, but then you got Zalando, that's a German marketplace that is pushing not just in Italy, but all around Europe. But all these to say that there's definitely my experience and also the data are showing you this, it definitely increase in terms of the penetration uh, and the usage for the population. So what you were experiencing is definitely uh, true. And there's also uh, a point uh, which is before definitely the pandemic and the corona crisis, in which there were requests and there were absolutely uh, people that were willing to buy online. And that's why you got these international players that could serve these people. Uh, then really what changed the game in Italy. And also if you look at Amazon, I'm, I'm always saying Amazon because in Italy, it is the marketplace. Uh, then there are others, uh, ePrice could be a good example of a local player, focusing more on electronics. And then I mentioned Zalando, which is a German, but it's becoming a European player. And of course you got like eBay and these others. Uh, the reality is that the pandemic changed radically the scenario because sure there's still a problem with the infrastructure the digitalization of the country and that's why also you know not just the last government uh, are trying to push this in terms of the infrastructure i mean i'm talking about places where you cannot get connect properly i mean my place this small village is 70 kilometers up north from Milan, nearby the Como Lake. So, I mean, it's next to Switzerland, definitely a productive area of the country, but you got a bad connection, which is a joke, but I mean, mm. it's a fact. And therefore there's this topic and we're trying to better that. But going back to the main topic, definitely what changed was the pandemic because there's definitely an acceleration. And of course, players like Amazon, that at the end of the day, gives you a very large choice, very good delivery and service. Because I mean, this was also a big topic in Italy, logistics, because it's always been historically complicated uh, in terms of delivering parcels and products. Therefore, I think that's exactly why this kind of player is booming. And to complete this answer, uh, you're right, absolutely. We are a country with a lot of specialties in terms of products. Of course, I don't have to quote made in Italy, but I mean, we do export food, fashion, furniture, and then industrial machinery. This is what the country is based on economically. And the point is that for sure, digital channels are a great opportunity also for smaller companies because I mean Italy historically is made up of small and medium companies we are not you know a country like Germany where I'm based where you have huge companies operating and therefore uh, internet and selling online it's a way also for this smaller business to access also new markets because of course you can start selling in Italy but then if you start on a marketplace like Amazon, you can scale it up and try to explore also uh, new markets. And right. So, so, so you, so you, sorry to interrupt, but you, you touched some very interesting points there. Um, you basically mentioned you, you mentioned the, the pandemic as and it has accelerated this transformation, right? So first, we we're talking about the lack of infrastructure in the country on for small small um, cities or small towns that you know they don't have the connections obviously people will not there to also, connect to the internet also big cities got problems I can okay tell. yeah so <laughs> i can tell so, which is crazy but it's a fact <laughs> so so we see that you know the government needs to step in to help to create or basically pave the world for um 
for the economic growth to come. And obviously, as part of that, the, 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 the internet connection at high speeds or, or even computer as well, that needs to be decent enough for people to access at any time, uh, any point in time. And, and obviously, people perceive, then, then comes a part of people who will perceive the, how, how easy it is to purchase online and the benefits of purchasing online in comparison to um, going to the local store. For instance, I, I, I don't know, but like here in Denmark, especially during the pandemic, um, there's been a shift in behavior as well, where because of the restrictions imposed during the pandemic, people were no longer buying groceries at the store, but rather all the supermarkets, they, they, they built up, on, uh, you know, they already had a, a website, but they had to come up with a, a delivery or a service where people can at least come and collect. This was, this was new, not, not, not the website in itself. So the e-commerce already existed, but if in, before, if you wanted to, to purchase something, you just, uh, you purchase it, they put it aside somewhere on the, in the store and then you go and collect it. Mm -hmm. And what, what changed afterwards is that they, because there were so many people, obviously the storage area required for so many orders was much larger. And also there was a huge queue for people coming in with their cars collected. And they could, you know, they had to be done in a way that you don't have, uh, you know, the, you're keeping the social, the, the distance sure. between people. So there are a lot of demands there and a lot of uh, uh, adaptations that had to be done in order to support that. And I believe it's something similar to what happening in, 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 in Italy. Um, and I was, you know, you mentioned the pandemic, I believe maybe it happened earlier as well. I remember the first time when I really see the e-commerce like becoming a real thing that was in the UK, it was in 2008. Mm -hmm. And the reason was because we were having a great depression worldwide. And that's also accelerated the e-commerce because people were no longer, you know, retail stores were getting expensive. Brick and mortar was expensive, to, especially if, you, if you're in a high street somewhere in central London, that's super expensive. And rents are going high. You know, people are desperate. There, there must be a way to, you know, to, to sell their products. And that's where Amazon started booming. And, and online sales in general, e eBay also had an incredible growth back then. So, so basically what you're saying is that the pandemic also accelerated that in, in Italy in recent years, right? Absolutely. And then you mentioned, you mentioned a few players. You mentioned, um, you mentioned Zalando, you mentioned Amazon, you mentioned marketplaces, e-price as well for electronics, right? Yeah. Um, are, is there like a one... Um, one player or one marketplace that you, you think is like the most it's or, or, or the largest one or is just like separated by niche because Alendo is like more of a fashion absolutely and e price more electronics amazon is kind of in between <laughs> it's all <old. laughs> how, how how does that work which which is which or which one is more so would the you point say is more prominent in the country yeah, definitely. Uh, you have Amazon, which is the player. In my opinion and my perception in terms of number, and I also in the last year I've been working specifically with Italian clients or international clients operating and selling in Italy, and Amazon is definitely the marketplace. Uh, then you got, of course, verticals, and that's a little bit also the topic because I mean we got the idea that Amazon is uh, perfect to sell everything, sure, but still uh, there are rules of the games, and there are also categories that are performing better, and also Amazon is very good in this uh, development of new categories, meaning that you know they can work with other uh, companies that before were not so interested into working with them. And then you got definitely some special players that are more vertical also. Uh, this is a topic if we're thinking about marketplaces. And then you have also, of course, pool players. And you've got also local companies that are starting to get more and more digitalized. And they are discovering the fact that, of course, like that, they can improve and they can also get new clients on board because I mean that's definitely a topic 
And as we mentioned before, Italy is definitely still uh, a country where we manufacture products and we try to sell them. I'm just laughing because, you know, there's a big trend of French companies, conglomerate, acquiring lots of Italian companies. And guess why? Because they're better into marketing and selling. So the uh, end, the chain. So basically what's happening is like, so they get the Italian product, we have the quality, but then the French are coming in and advertising it better. Uh, no, actually they acquire company, they merge, they acquire, I mean, you got- Yeah, but they're, but they're product. coming with the advertising part and basically announcing- They got a specific uh, uh, yeah. knowledge that because of what I mentioned before, the fact that historically, of course, in Italy, companies are smaller than you got also big player. I mean, Armani, just to mention somebody, is definitely Italian. But then you got, look at Fendi. I work in the past uh, in the fashion industry. Fendi is a Roman company coming from Rome. It's a family. Now it's LVMH, which is the biggest conglomerate. Uh, Louis Vuitton is a French player and they acquired this company and they're definitely doing very well because they're able to sell better. And therefore there's definitely a lack also in this. And also if we look at a specific know-how for online, uh, there's a lack uh, that you can see because of the fact that also the people, the professionals are not so used to these topics. Uh, it's definitely something that is changing because the market is changing fast and there's a need. And also because nowadays, luckily, even if I'm not there, my country is doing better economically and it seems that it's going back on track, let's put it that way. And therefore, I think that this is going to be definitely uh, a big trend and a new reality that is able to change the country. Uh, meaning that, you know, internally companies are answering and will have to answer more and more a specific requests of consumers, because that's the point. And then I think that they start to see that there are uh, opportunities to expand their business also abroad through digital. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, exactly what I see in terms of number and also you know the discussion that I have with uh, companies and this is, I think definitely affect nowadays. Yeah, so now, so, so now you're touching into a very interesting subject because it's something that I have a lot of discussion about and something that I, I came across quite a bit. You know, we, uh, as an agency, we, we work a lot with brand and brand owners to sell, um, to sell their products online. So we see in the latest years, a lot of brands going directly to the consumers, so D two C. Yeah, they they no longer they're they're trying to cut the middleman and middle markets as well, and just going selling directly to the consumers. So suddenly you have they have their own website, and but they're they're suddenly there's a they see the need to catch up with the digitalization, with understanding online sales, which is a totally a you know a, a, some a, um a part of the operation that they totally neglected mm -hmm. for many years. So because uh, retailers, they were quick to uh, adapt to the new, to e-commerce. So they moved from brick and mortar to open an online shop, yeah. uh, operate an, a, a, a shop online, but brands, they kind of left it out completely. They continue selling their products to retailers and they basically, uh, leave the, the online universe to whatever the retailers want to do. But now they realize that they're not just bigger margins, but much more control of the branding when they sell directly to the customers, to consumers. Mm -hmm. But then there's like, what do you say? Like a lot of these manufacturers, they're very traditional and they're excellent at creating products, but their focus on e-commerce is simply not there because they, 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 they lack professionals who, who know this, they, or they really don't understand, you know, they, most of the, the manufacturers, they're just focused on making products, right? They want to make big quantities and, or make decent enough quantity and just sell it in bulk. And then when you, when they have, when they want to do a D2C, suddenly they realize, okay, now I'm dealing with one customer. And then this customer, for whatever reason, is not pleased 
So now I need to answer all the questions to, the, uh, to this customer about the product. I also need to receive the product back. And there's all those tasks that need to be done to perform it. So, um, so I was actually going to ask you what is, because we talk about how Italian consumers are perceiving these marketplaces and they see that these are interesting places to, to go and purchase. But then I wanted to know more about this topic of the, the, the manufacturers um, and the, the B2B businesses moving on to marketplaces. Do they perceive this as, as a good channel? Are they doing any changes? I mean, is this accelerating the changes as well internally and in the companies? Do you see that? I think... Uh... What I can mention, for example, is Yux uh, Net Apporté. Yux mm. uh, is an Italian company that started focusing on fashion. And with the years, they evolved into a model uh, in which they were basically supply, uh, supplying uh, brands in the fashion industry in terms of specific know-how, how to build up a website, how to deal you know, with customers and so on. And I mean, they got so big that they acquired also. <laughs> and I mean, now it's a conglomerate with net a which is definitely a huge group. But I think that this is a good example and it's not a coincidence that was uh, created and launched in Italy in the sense that you got lots of uh, companies that are focusing on doing the best and the most beautiful products in the world. And it's not because they are coming from my country, but because it's a fact in terms of the results that they have, uh, that these are very, very nice products. And therefore, I think this is a good example of what it being in the past. Nowadays, there's definitely a lack of knowledge. And that's exactly where I think there's a big opportunity for the companies and the biggest challenge is to really embrace also change and technology, meaning digitalization in that sense. Because I mean, you can think about wine. We've got so many beautiful wine coming from Italy. And if you go in the southern part, there are some that have got specific days because the sun is stronger. If you go north end, you might have something else because of course it depends on the climate and so on. But the point is that that's exactly where we have so many special things. And nowadays there are players that are focusing also uh, on wine, trying to absolutely push this. So that's exactly where there's a big opportunity. And I think this is definitely a big challenge. And that's exactly where I mean, you, we see that also in the market, there are more and more uh, specific agency that are doing business. And I think the real big differentiation point is that to do this kind of business, let's just say marketplace business, mm -hmm. you really need to have a specific know-how. Uh, if we get more specific and we think about advertising on Amazon, you got PPC, you got DSP, but I mean, then you got also opportunity of having for free a brand store, which is basically a shopping shop that you can have on Amazon, which is very interesting because it's new and they use not to allow this. But of course, they perceive the fact that, you know, also company wants to market better their products. And therefore, they gave this possibility, which is for free even. But then you need to build it up properly. And it's definitely different uh, from having a normal website because there are formats, there are different possibilities, and there are special options that you need to understand. If I think about advertising, it's the same idea. One of the latest, or not even one of the latest, but I would say the latest uh, format for PPC advertising on Amazon that was launched is the sponsor brand video. It's basically the possibility to link one ASIN, one product that is already listed and sold on Amazon to an advertising with a video. If you go online uh, on Amazon, Italy, but also all the other European countries that you check, you will notice there are some videos that are very, very impacting and they're very specific. I mean, in my experience, uh, no more than 22 seconds, even if you're allowed to have more. 
and they're built up specifically for Amazon and therefore they have specific structure and some specific ideas behind. On the other end, you might find also some very beautiful advertising from a company that is using material that was used for normal advertising, so video advertising, and you will notice that it does not really work the same way. And therefore, it means that, you know, of course, these kind of companies that are investing this money, they're, in my opinion, as a professional in this industry, not interpreting correctly what they are doing and where they're acting also, because there are specific rules that need to be respected to be successful. Mm -hmm. And of course, the products is a, something that in my mind, when I think about products uh, and the discussion about quality and so on, nowadays, you need to have products that are absolutely, uh, how to say, beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's a prerequisite to have, you know, specific standards. And then, I mean, there are also new trends if we think about uh, environment, sustainability. I mean, these are definitely something that is impacting and it is pushing. But I mean, thinking about, you know, a product that is produced and uh, done, I mean, in a beautiful way, just to summarize the concept, it's definitely a, a, something that you need to have the, mm -hmm. to be successful. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I was actually thinking, um, many many brands they they again they're focused so much on the manufacturing side and they they were trusting a lot of the tasks for selling the product to the retailers and when they come you know and and i think in their mind they also think like people like Zalando, um, um amazon they're they're retailers because they will take their product and sell it to consumers but I think they don't realize that, you know, it's like from their perspective, the, 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 the goal was to put their products on the shelves, putting the yeah. products on the shelves, it will sell. So they come into the online marketplace with the same concept, the same idea, thinking that it suffice to put the product online and it will sell. And we know, and we know this is not true, really. Slowly, they're realizing that you're not just putting the product on the shelf, but in which position on the shelf? Where are you going to get your products going to get visibility? Because there's way too many products in all these marketplaces. And if you so, if you want to buy a tomato sauce, and there's like thousands and thousands of brands of tomato sauce, where is your product? Your product is way at the end of the aisle. Nobody's going to walk all the way to the end of the wild just to pick up a tomato sauce. They just get the first one they see, right? And that's one thing people are realizing. I, I don't know. Am, am I crazy or is this something you've seen as well? I think it's definitely a point because the digital shelf, it's huge. And that's a point. I mean, if you look Infinite, at that, in basically, of, if you look in terms of references and ASINs, I always say ASINs because that's a specific name to identify uh, a product on Amazon. Uh, but I mean, the point is that the digital shelf, it's huge. And uh, as you were saying, if you don't have a clear positioning for your brand, your products, and even after that, if you don't have a strategy in terms of, if we're thinking about promoting uh, the products in terms of advertising, digital advertising, uh, it's definitely going to be tough because, I mean, as you mentioned, you can have the best tomato sauce in the world, but if you don't market that properly, explaining that it's the most tasty because, for example, the tomatoes are coming from Pacino, which is in the southern part of Sicily, and they got this, I've been there once, they got these beautiful tomatoes, and they're so delicious, just to mention one, then you got also other sorts. Uh, if you think about the pizza in Naples, I mean, they got specific mm. uh, tomatoes also there. But the point is that if you are not able to position also the products and communicate the products, and that's also where you get into the storytelling at the end of the day, because I mean, also what I'm telling you, it's about a beautiful country, which is mine by any it's just a coincidence, but still, it is a country with lots of diversity in terms of the products, in terms of the possibility that there are also there. And the point is also how we 
tell this story. I will sell this story and I will market this. And absolutely, you're right. I think that lots of company in the past years didn't really realize that. Because yeah. I mean, I've been talking a lot about Amazon, but this is an important point. Amazon is definitely the biggest marketplace in Italy, but it's not the only way you can do business online. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the point because I mean it doesn't mean that if you want to sell online you just have to go on Amazon we said there are some other verticals there are other possibilities you can uh, use social media in combination with email marketing and then improve your online strategy uh, definitely I mean marketplaces are an accelerator and that's why if we look at the numbers in Italy more and more companies are absolutely using marketplaces, specifically Amazon, because it's also somehow, I would say, an easier way, to be very honest, Rafael, because it's yeah. tough, you know, already for the companies to sell. And I mean, when they see this window and this opportunity, and of course, Amazon is so good to take you on board, to help you, to support you, exploit this opportunity, they go for that. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, a topic uh, that nowadays not so many companies really realize. But I mean, that's definitely something that will be discussed in the next years. That's yeah, my, my yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. And I also think this is something um, that marketplaces like Amazon, but also could mention Zalando, they, they, they caught, up, caught up the wind of that. In, this, in a sense, they're slowly, like Amazon used to be, the place to buy everything, right? Or anything at the cheapest price possible. So basically competing with eBay. Uh, and eBay remains pretty much the same. You just look for a price or if you want to some, buy something in bulk. But if you, if you, you know, but Amazon has really um, changed the way you sell products, you, the way you market your products now. And they have enabled brands to come up and tell more about themselves. It make a differentiation of their product compared to their comparison to, to the competitors. So it's no longer a matter of just competing on a price, but also competing on the quality and who you are. So you have the possibility, you mentioned video as well. So Amazon gives the possibility to make videos where you can explain not just how much your product is superior or better in any way, but also a little bit of this, the history of your brain. And I guess that's what a lot of, you know, Italian companies would greatly benefit from that. But not just Italian companies, pretty much any brand or any manufacturer that wants to wants to sell online. Because I guess everyone that manufactures something, for whatever reason, they must think this is the best in the market, right? They, they're not going to work or produce something that they're like, this is crap, and I'm just going to, I just want to sell it. I don't think so. I think the great majority is thinking, you know, I want to make the best tomato sauce you can ever find anywhere in the world. But how you communicate this to the clients, you know, people who coming from another country, they never heard of your, uh, of that particular kind of tomato or, or uh, in Sicily, it's, they don't know anything of that. So how do you communicate? You need to be able to, to do that. And I think marketplaces have evolved in a way that um, enable brands to do that. And I was actually thinking of, um, we, we came across a situation where we have a, um, um, a brand, the, they sell uh, Brazil nuts in the US and they're, they're a brand from Brazil, from the northern part of Brazil. And it was very interesting because they were, they basically came after us because they, they wanted to sell, they were selling already on Amazon uh, US mm -hmm. and their competitors, they had a, a, a higher price and selling a lot more. And it's like, we have a way better product because he knows that he was telling me like many of our competitors, I mean, we, if you follow the origin of the product, they're basically buying it from Bolivia. They're not even from Brazil. They're from Bolivia or from Peru. And these are planted trees, you know, like in the harvest, uh, it's, they have farms, just they're farming these, these, these nuts. And the nuts that we sell we actually use the people who live by the river in the Amazon. So we use natives and they collect it from the native trees. Those trees were not planted. And I mean, the quality of the nuts is incredibly higher. And, um, and, and we build this 
co cooperative, then, then uh, we work with these people. So um, a part of the proceedings, part of the money that we make from selling the, these Brazil nuts, we actually give it to them to help them. And uh, these people to, you know, to they basically live in villages. So very poor conditions as well. So they wanted to improve that as well. And then I said, wow, you have an amazing story as a brand. Where is that story on Amazon? Where is that story with your product? You're basically competing on the price level and you're just pushing the price lower and lower. That's that's not where you should go. You know, you're not telling anybody. I mean, you, you just told me a whole story about your brand and your product, how superior it is. And where is that uh, when you communicate to the customers? No customers don't. The only thing they see, okay, this is Brazil Nuts. It's cheap. Do I want it or do I, I don't want it? Instead of, this is some Brazil Nuts. Well, they're actually from the from the rainforest. They're not planted, so it's completely organic. There are no pesticides or anything. And they're actually helping the people, the local people who, who, who I'll be helping the local people when I purchase this one. Which one should I buy? This one or the, the competitor? You see, and, and that, that that communication, it's I, I see that sometimes it's lacking. <laughs> And from 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 the brand perspective, and like I said before, I think some uh, some brands they they come with an old mentality that it suffice to put the product on the shelf, and that's it. It will sell, and nothing. They don't need to do anything else. But um, I think uh, the brands who are doing really well, and and it also comes to brands like sometimes some brands they want to come, they want to sell on Amazon, so they are big outside of Amazon. They already have some presence. But then they ask on Amazon, they, uh, they want to sell on Amazon, they ask if their competitors are already on Amazon. And when you look at the top selling brands in, certain, in any category, very often they are not popular brands outside of, of Amazon. And very often they, they are private labels operated by uh, moms and pops, you know, like shops that sure. they just came up with a private label, and, but they market them really well. They are very good at uh, talk about the product, the benefits of the product, and then suddenly they're, boom, they're the, the top seller in the category and not necessarily with the best product. Not necessarily, but you know, some, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not, but they're really good at working the system. <laughs> I, I, what, what's your view on that? I, 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 am I crazy or no, you no, have a similar crazy. experience to that? <laughs> you're not crazy, Rafael, because I mean, we go back to what I mentioned before is storytelling, but I mean, I mean, also a way to sell products and explaining the products and the stories of the products. So it is definitely a point. And that's why, you know, also these players, I mentioned before the opportunity of having brand stores on, on Amazon, which is relatively new, but I mean, it's definitely what also Amazon realized that producers wanted to uh, position themselves and differentiate and tell stories about the products. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly something that I also see. I can tell you a small story. I'm, working pro bono right now, uh, collaborating with a company that is running this uh, online website. It's called Plechum Clever. Hmm? What they do, it's an association that is supporting people that were unemployed for 10 years, 20 years. And, you know, they take these people and they help them to restart working and to get used also to this idea of working, which is a tough uh, task. And, what I'm seeing, you know, I, I went 10 days ago to see the companies, to see they also have well, schools so that, you know, these people can really learn and maybe something new. And then they sell the products online. And the topic is, and that's why I'm collaborating with this uh, project and shop, that, you know, they have beautiful products. Because, of course, I mean, they're focusing on the quality and they are also very good products in the sense that you know you're when you're buying one of those products uh, you are really helping somebody to get back on into a normal life and therefore you know it was funny because I talked with um, the general manager of the company and the first thing he told me he told me like yeah we are the good people and we say yeah but what do you mean and we was then explaining the project and it's true you know because you can of course have a cheaper they do, you know, bags, for example. I also, with an interesting topic, upcycling, they take 
you know, products like jeans and out of the jeans, they do, for example, an hand, uh, sorry, an handbag. I spoke German for a second. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's amazing because what they are doing, they are basically, you know, taking an old jeans, they are reshaping it and they're marketing that with a new life. And there is a story. So my point when, you know, after the day I was talking with this uh, guy and I was saying, yeah, I mean, it's crazy because you don't explain that. You don't say that, you know, you don't, when you are online, I check the website, they got very standard pictures. And I was saying to them, you should add, you know, maybe some information saying, or even showing, you know, that that bag was done using four different kind of genes that you find. And you can even imagine the story behind because I mean, they get donations or they buy that. I mean, you can even go back, you know, one step mm. to the origin of the product that then was taken, transformed and remarketed. And this is a beautiful story that they are not saying correctly in my idea at the moment. And that's exactly the same idea, you know. The point is that you need really to communicate the product and being able also to market them properly. And definitely online, there are specific dynamics, opportunities, tools that also companies need to understand and have specific uh, know-how. I mean, there are agencies, there are consultants, or of course they can also inside embrace change that's my personal view and then i mean let's say digest these topics and also you know with a system of trying and error a step by step build up uh, internal knowledge and to use that and i'm pretty sure that you know it's not an easy game and this was also a very old illusion uh, that you know you were just putting your products online bam they were sold and you would be successful that's mm. not true but I think that this is definitely a pattern that companies need to go mm -hmm. and to, to walk through, to be successful online. And that's exactly the biggest challenge. Yeah, I think, I think term and, and, and long-term uh, growth, that, that's, that's the way to go. And, and also to be profitable as well, because you know when, when we talk about online, uh, you're no longer competing with your neighbor. You're competing with basically a lot more people and giving marketplaces uh, specifically you have competitors sometimes from different countries as well so if you want to be successful is and it's i don't think it's just company on the price but really try to um bring the brand value you know the perception of the brand and to the consumers to the final consumers and uh on that note have you experienced brands wanting to go international using marketplaces? What's your experience with that? Absolutely. Also, because I think that, you know, marketplaces are also a very interesting tool to test market in the sense of collect information, try to maybe, you know, do a little bit of sales and deals also with the specific logic. Because, I mean, if you take... I mentioned before I'm based in Germany. This is an easy example, but uh, if you want to send a product back here that you bought online, it's for free. Uh, there's no cost, mm -hmm. meaning that, of course, behind there is a cost. And I mean, there's a specific pricing, a specific strategy. But the reality is that people are used to do that. And that's why, you know, they buy lots of, if we're talking, for example, about clothes, they will order different products, check, and then send them back because maybe they're not fitting correctly, you know? And that's definitely something very specific. And I mean, this is definitely something that you need to consider every country, also Europe, it's beautiful because it's different, have got a specificity, meaning, you know, that some, I mean, and this is just an example that I gave, some practice that in a country are standard uh, might not be the same in another one. Can you mention one? I mean, this is exactly the return rate. I mean, these top okay. standard products, that's, and that's not a coincidence that Zalando now offered that everywhere. But I mean, yeah. if you look at that some years ago, it was just in Germany. Yeah, I was, I was, I was just thinking as an example, um, I think some years ago, when, when I first started trading it, 
in um, in Amazon Germany or we're looking at German market uh, from the UK, the biggest difference was that the consumers in Germany, it was very common to pay cash on delivery or, or they pay after they receive the product, which is unthinkable coming in the UK. You would never do that. No, you pay first. Sure. And, and then, then you get the product. You get the product. <laughs> but it's like in Italy, another good example. Nowadays, you know, everybody, not everybody, but I mean, credit cards are more used and there are other solutions. Before, I mean, people were also scared just to use a credit card and not even, you know, imagining of giving data online because, of course, I mean, there are scams and frauds and no, I don't want to do that because mm. people are used to paying cash. And this is something definitely changing. I think that there's also another topic that you don't have to underestimate the fact that also technology has got its cycle and it takes also, you know, at certain time and then you got resistance to these changes. But then, I mean, luckily young people are becoming more (laughs) older and they're, you know, getting, uh, I mean, becoming, let's say the majority. So probably, you know, something- they're, They're pushing for the change. Definitely, and mm. that's definitely also a topic because I mean, also Italy, it's a country that is old. The population of the country is old. Mm. And that means that of course, uh, new technologies is carry also somehow for lots of people, maybe not for you and for me because Co- we love this industry. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the older population of Italy, they don't even speak Italian, right? They usually speak dialect. Uh, that could be, yes, definitely. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, sure. That, that was my experience there as well. Like, no, no, especially, no, they, they spoke Veneto or yeah, Venetian. Yeah, especially right? where they you were in Veneto, absolutely, yes. They didn't speak exactly. Italian. So the younger generation speak Italian. Absolutely. Right. I mean, that's a fact, you know, uh, and it's true because myself, I speak my dialect. I can understand that. But I know people uh, that are definitely old and they just speak dialect. It's definitely a point, you know. Mm. And this is, I mean, of course, also impacting then on the dynamics of the market, I think. And this is something that we have to consider. And that's also going back to the general talking of companies, something that is also impacting on the mentality of companies. Because if you have a top management that is absolutely, let's say, to summarize, old school or, you know, at a certain age, which is not bad. I'm not saying, you know, that young people should rule the world. I mean, the world is made of young and older people, but of course, you know, the point of having younger management and change in terms of the generation change in terms of the leadership also in companies. Mm -hmm. And I can say, I mean, if we talk about Italy, it's also political in my opinion, but that's another discussion that we will have another time. And, uh, Let's not go dive in Italian but, politics. That's no, not. but that's exactly why, I mean, we go back to the corporations, but it's true that there is an impact because if you have a CEO that is used to produce products beautifully, sell them beautifully, and you say, sure, but there's also this and that opportunity. Maybe, you know, you find somebody that is open-minded and we say, okay, let's talk about that. But I did experience myself, you know, this kind of situation in which you're talking with people that think that they already are doing everything so well, which might be the case, but at the end of the day, they're maybe missing some new opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that's a fact. That is also, in my opinion, impacted from this idea of having also, you know, lots of people that are relatively older and not so open to change because embracing change it's not so easy for everybody for my, me as well personally but i mean it's something that you want to train yourself and then to focus and step by step you get there yeah absolutely alessandro we're uh, running out of time <laughs> but i i'm having a really good conversation with you um i was just wondering is 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 there anything you would like to say maybe of your profession or maybe you would like to leave your details if people would like to contact you sure i mean you can just contact me on linkedin without any problems no. if you're interested and go and check out this is something because it's a pro bono that i'm doing really go and check uh clever pump day because i mean they got beautiful products guys so please go for it you know that's fantastic thank you very much for your time Alessandro. I'll speak to you then. My pleasure. Take care. Bye. Bye.